In today's video, we're going to walk through the Vue MJS template to show how it uses the Service Stack Vue Components Library to make building progressive UIs fast and easy while maintaining end-to-end -end type safety with your web services. Using Vue to progressively enhance web applications is a great way to sustainably build out your web application since each page loads in isolation. Multi-page applications or MPAs don't have the same complexity as single-page applications or SPAs, such as client-side routing and state management between pages. And now with all major browsers supporting ES modules or JavaScript modules, we can also avoid complex tools like Webpack and even NPM dependencies. The Vue MJS template from ServiceStack gives developers a great starting point with these tools to build your next application while giving you a type safe web service integration that's easy to maintain. In this video, we will walk through using the Service Stack View Components Library that makes this integration seamless when building your UIs for your web services. From generating entire UIs that automatically show context-specific validation errors with one view component, to individual fields you can customize and template yourself. To show how this all works, let's walk through the bookings example in the Vue MJS template and how it uses the Service Stack Vue components in its implementation. First, let's create a new Vue MJS application using the Service Stack.NET X tool and the command x new space view hyphen MJS space my app. Opening the solution with your favorite .NET IDE, we have our main app host project which contains our Razor pages and multi-page view application using JavaScript modules and the Service Stack view component library. To run our application, we can use the scripts in the package.json file to run dev for .NET watch and ui colon dev for the tailwind style generation. Notice we don't have any dependencies listed in our package.json file or any node modules installed. If we look at our Razor layout page in the pages shared directory, we will see an import map function that loads the view library and our service stack client and view components, mapping them to easy to use aliases. When our application pages or components then need to load these modules, we only have to use the syntax import from view or their alias name to access the modules. Opening our bookings.cshtml razor page, we have our server rendered HTML at the top and our progressively enhanced view components included at the bottom of the page. Our components are created in .mjs files that are in our www root folder which are static files deployed directly with our application. The bookings crud index.mjs file in the www root pages directory is the interactive client side view component that runs the page. This component is responsible for all the create, read, update and delete operations that integrate with our service stack services. And it does this using three main components from the Service Stack View Components Library. Data Grid to display the bookings, Auto Create Form to create new bookings, and Auto Edit Form to update and delete bookings. Starting with the bookings data grid we can see here, we have it declared with a series of customization templates for each column, but these are completely optional. For example, we can delete everything and just leave the declaration of the data grid component binding directly to the bookings array of data and we get a data grid driven completely off the data itself. The data itself is initialized as static JSON when the server first renders the page and updated later using the server stack client using our generated request and response DTOs which are JavaScript modules on the client in the DTOs.mjs file. At the top of the bookings component, we are importing the DTOs.mjs file to use the query bookings request DTO to fetch our data for the data grid. 
all these request and response DTOs are generated by this specific server and we can keep them in sync with our server by using server stack IDE tooling or a CLI using the command xmjs in our project directory. This gives us autocomplete syntax highlighting and static analysis when building our multi-page application, since all the JavaScript modules are being used directly in our application. The data grid template can be used with a matching property name to customize both the content and the heading of the data grid, making it extremely flexible. This enables us to present each column's data exactly how we need, as well as make the entire grid responsive and optimized for smaller screens. Next, we have our auto create form. This component allows us to use our specific create booking request DTO type information to generate the entire form for us. Our UI controls are inferred from metadata about our services, like room type, which is an enum field which then uses a drop down for only valid values. We can also control the UI presentation by decorating our C -sharp request DTO properties with attributes like input. Here we are using input type text area to make the notes property show up as a text area for longer form text. Input exposes a lot of other properties to customize these visuals like label, placeholder and required. The server stack validation attributes also flow our errors down to our view components like auto create form and auto edit form. If we try to create a booking with just a name, we can see context specific validation that binds to the related fields on the UI. All we have done to enable this functionality in our view client is to declare an auto create form element specifying the request DTO type and the context of your server stack application can infer the rest. The auto edit form component works in the same way for editing our bookings, but it also has the optional ability to enable managing the delete operation as well. On both of these components, we can bind to events like done, save and delete to customize the behavior of our application as we need. If you want more control but still want to retain that validation support, each field can be declared by itself in a form, and if the ID matches the field in the request DTO, our validation errors still flow down to our UI. For example, in the signup.mjs component, we are using the standard form in combination with our service stack view components like text input and checkbox input. The form is managing the onSubmit method using the API client to call the register service itself, and the validation errors bind to the matching fields if there are any issues. The Service Stack View Components library makes working with your Service Stack API simple, helping you build applications faster. The components are highly flexible and composable, enabling you to get more out of your Service Stack APIs with custom view web interfaces. We have extensive documentation and examples over on our Service Stack Docs website at docs.servicestack.net forward slash view, and we are expanding these components all the time. So give them a try and let us know what other components you might want to see included to make API integration even easier. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the Service Stack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. Service Stack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.